Hey everybody, Jimmy here. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, consider subscribing. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate it. So today, we need to talk about the one thing, the only thing that matters that you need to know before you take any trade. We're gonna talk about that today. This one thing made my day today, made my trades possible, and you need to be aware of this one thing before each and every trade that you take. So today a light bulb clicked on in my head. It blew my mind. It seems super obvious, but this one thing has literally changed the landscape of my trading. And it happened today because I was really bored and just watching price action with no trade setting up for me today. So I wanna talk about that one thing and how it applied to my trades I wanna show you the trades I took today. I wanna to show you the entries, the exits, the logic. We'll go through all of that. And then if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Let's jump in. Okay, so before I jump into the one thing that I've been going on and on about, I first wanna show you my trade that I took on Alibaba right away this morning. and. The reason I want to show it to you is because it relates to a new strategy that I may have hinted at last week. It's resurfaced today. I decided to go ahead and take a trade on it. I want to show you the spreadsheet that I'm tracking for it. I only have 10 samples, but it's looking promising, but I'm still trying to define the boundaries of it. So I just want to show that to you real quick. So on Alibaba this morning, um, you know, I've been seeing this range bound Alibaba for a while. It broke down below this blue line, which is my uh, threshold um, or my breach line. And the lowest it got was this point, the dash line. So it's been bouncing around and I'm very short biased on this stock right now. So I wanted to see it push back up towards the breach line, roll over and then allow me to take a short position. So that was the setup for this morning. And I wanna go ahead and flip over to the three minute chart and talk about why I took an entry here. So what I've been looking at recently, or what I've noticed is that anytime a stock is early in trading, like I like to watch it, it seems like this has been happening in the first maybe hour of the trading day. I've been noticing that, for example, let's say I'm short biased on the stock because of my larger time frame. So this time frame says, okay, I'm short biased, now I'm flipping over to my smaller time frame, and now what I'm watching for, and this is the key, I'm watching for a strong break of this nine daily SMA in the direction that I'm biased. And I'm looking for the first one, the first break in the direction that I'm biased. So this morning when this opened up, it pushed up, then I got this doji right here, kind of a pause in price action, and then this really strong candle that just moved straight down. You can see it went straight through the, the daily nine SMA, held below and closed. When the next candle opened, I took it short. I only risked $30 on this trade. I didn't want to get too crazy. I just wanted to kind of dabble in it. So I took $30 risk and it ended up being 100 shares because the ATR on it was um, about 25 cents. So. Once it crossed, closed, opened, I went short. I got a little better than one to one on it and I flattened the position and took the profit. So I just took a quick $31. But it's a strategy I've been kind of playing with and this is my spreadsheet on it. Kind of a first cross of that 9 EMA. And you can see that on the 26th, which was last Friday, this is a host of stocks I watch every day. And every single one of them won at the one to one level, the 1.5 to one risk to reward level, and the two to one, all of them. All of them won in that category. So today when I took Baba short at, I guess it was a 30 cent ATR, not 20, I think I said 25 earlier. A 30 cent ATR, I got a one to one on it. I took the profit a little better than one to one. But so far, I've got 10 samples and 10 winners in each of the categories here. So I'm just watching this. I'm defining the specifics of it, but it's something I wanted to make you guys aware of. You might see me trading this strategy from time to time. 
And so I'll definitely answer questions on it and I'll also continue to provide information about it. So I just wanted to get that out of the way and just kind of mention it. But the trade was, was here. It was this red candle breaching and the open of this one below because we're moving in the direction that I'm biased, which was short on BABA this morning. So moving on from that, I want to show you the exciting trade where the one thing you need to know comes into play, and that's going to be on Micron Technology today. So this morning, here's the setup. This morning, I was watching uh, all my stocks, and when I say all my stocks, I typically just mean this list right over here. I watch these every day. Not for any specific reason, but just I like their price action. I've followed them for a while. I'm comfortable with them. And that's really all there is to that. So when I was watching a bunch of stocks this morning and I saw Micron and I did my, my pre-market evaluation of where my breach line is going to be. And you can see that Micron broke my breach line, dropped all the way down bounced up and has been kind of slowly working its way back up towards the breach line. So I wanted to see some interaction with that line, a rollover, and then I was going to try and go short. So that was the plan starting off. So as we get into this, the thing I noticed, I watched a bunch of stocks in my watch list and nothing was setting up this morning. Hour one went by, hour two went by, hour three went by. And I was just watching moves and how they were happening and which candles were coming out. And I started to notice one recurring theme every single time. And it happened in this trade and it's changed my, my trading. I had a pivotal moment today. And so here's what it is. You can see this worked its way up. We got close to the breach line. It worked its way around. And then it came all the way up. So you might say, Jimmy, why didn't you take this short? You got your cross, it crossed over, and it's starting to head down. So here's the problem. First of all, I like to see a cross where the candle actually crosses the line. So like this, this would be a better example, or even this would be a better example. So when this came down and this candle opened up and it started moving below, I looked down here at the volume and you can see this candle is lower, nothing too crazy. Kept watching, kept watching, kept watching. I was gonna let it come back up and fail one more time because we kinda had this higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, another higher high, higher low. I wanted to see a failure. So I got a lower high, lower low, lower high, and now I was looking for a lower low and I got this little candle right here crossing. So that got me interested. And I looked down, no volume. So I said, I can't take it. This isn't something that's, that's gonna work right now. So I went ahead and watched it for a second longer. And then right after that candle came this big guy right here. And this volume candle surged. That got my attention. And it caught my attention because I saw the same thing happen about eight times today on different stocks in different positions, not, not in accordance with my setup or my, my trading strategy, but for just regular price action. And the minute I saw that, it was almost instinctual. I just said, I'm going short. Here's, this is it. So that candle closed with this big old push in volume. And when this candle opened, I gave it just a second to see if it would pull back, see if people would take some profit. And it did. It pushed up a little bit and paused. And then I took my short position. Waited, set my stop above this candle right in here. The ATR was only about four cents, so not a huge, um, I mean the trade range wasn't huge, it was four. It popped up, rolled over, and according to my spreadsheet, you can see that trade on MU, all three risk to rewards, one live trade ATR of four cents, worked out perfectly. But the one thing that you have to have and have to know before every trade is you've gotta see a shift in volume, showing you that momentum's there, showing you that your bias is present. So if you're long biased, you need buyers to be present in your trade 
in order to give you a, a higher probability of success with the movement of the price action. So today, right here, this came down and pushed down. Now, you could say, okay, it crossed, let's go short. But with the absence of the sellers and more larger buying candles, it's not really the right environment yet. So you can see it just bounced right back up. And if you would have taken this short, you probably would have gotten stopped because you might have, you know, you might have placed your stop. I don't, you know, I don't even know where you would have placed it in that case, but you could have got bounced out and stopped. So when I saw that big volume candle come in, really big and bigger than a lot of the buying candles in the area, it, after watching all the other occurrences today where I'd see a large volume come in and then a nice move and then a fizzle out and then another stock. Nice volume comes rushing in, you get a beautiful move, and then it fizzles out. So when that came in today, I immediately knew that I was going to go short. And this has tr literally changed my trading. So with my strategy, I like to see a little bit of volume, but I'm going to really be confirmed and convicted on some of these trades when I see a good push in volume. Volume is something I've always been aware of, but I've never really been able to use it to its full extent or to its full ability. And I feel like today, this really confirmed some things for me, watching volume, just watching it come in because we don't know when it's going to happen. But when you see it, you know it's there because you're watching it in real time. It's happening right in front of your face. So when it surges and I get this big candle confirming this down and I'm getting a lower low coming in, I know it's time to, to sell to the short side. It's time to go. So the minute this opened and moved up a little bit, I just took it short, stopped myself at a logical place, which was above the high of this candle, and then let it go. And I took profits a little better than one to one, barely, but um, if I would have wanted to, it would have gone 1.5 and it would have gone two. So that was a really exciting day uh, of trading with MU, and you can see it's just dumping again. It's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. So... We're going to leave that alone so that we don't get tempted to jump in there. And I want to show you one more trade that I did not take. I missed this one. And this is on Facebook. And this was a beautiful trade. And let me drag this over real quick. So on Facebook, I was long biased this morning. And you can see we got a pullback close to this line. And then we got this candle push up. And you can see, look at this volume start to come in. And then look at this massive candle. So this volume started to come in. I took it, or I didn't take it long. I would have taken it long. And if I flip over to the spreadsheet, you can see right here, Facebook long, 29 cent ATR. Yes, yes, and yes. All three of them hit. Two to one, 1 1.5 to one, and one to one. So current statistics right now on this breach pullback strategy if I'm trading a one-to-one -one risk to reward, I'm about 86.4 after 44 samples. On the 1.5, I'm 77.3%, which is great. And then on my two-to-one, I'm 52.3, which is really encouraging because two-to-one at a better than 50% win rate, I'll take that all day long. That's, a, <laughs> that's really great. So all three of these have me really excited and after having such a, a dull three or four hours of just watching price action, having this come through and confirm some things for me, and then having this volume dawn on me that, yes, you've got to have big volume, not just tiny fluctuations, but you need to confirm that your buyers are behind you and then join them for the trade. It's all about joining the mass of buyers or the mass of sellers. Ride with them, cut your profits, <laughs> track your statistics, and then rinse and repeat. That's all you got to do, right? So anyway, thank you for sticking with me through this. I hope that paying attention to volume and really, really doubling down on it when you see it come in strong will really help your trading. I really hope that helps. Um, but I'm, I'm, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about all this today. So hope everybody was green. Let me know how you did. Ask me questions, drop comments down below, and we'll be back at it tomorrow morning. Thank you for stopping by. Have a great night.